Hey everybody, just a quick reminder that if you enjoyed this content or any of my videos, be sure and leave a like. It helps support the channel and allows my videos to move it on up with YouTube's algorithm. Thanks again. Video game crossovers and what ifs are something gaming fans have been dreaming of for a long, long time. The possibility of seeing video game icons such as Mario and Sonic teaming up was going to be something special, but they ended up just competing at the Olympics instead. To be fair though, it was a fun game. In the mid-90s, we had a number of crossovers thanks to Capcom, including Marvel vs. Capcom, Street Fighter X Tekken, and Capcom vs. SNK. Other crossovers that fans have dreamed of usually involved popular IP such as Marvel, DC Comics, and the whole fighting genre. One game in particular came along that realistically shouldn't have even been possible but yet turned into a fun little title that featured some classic characters. Good grief, I'm not talking about Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen vs. the Peanuts gang. I'm talking about the epic head-to-head -head fighter Mortal Kombat vs. DC Universe. This mishmash super epic fighting extravaganza featured a number of classic Mortal Kombat and DC Comics characters in a fight to the not-so-bloody death. What were the restrictions put on this game? What were the DLC characters that were planned but never released? What fatality was censored here in North America? Let's find out as we deep dive into the history of Mortal Kombat vs. DC Universe. In 2013, the big brain of Ed Boon and his development team, NetherRealm Studios, brought us the fantastic Injustice Gods Among Us fighting game. This featured some incredible fighting action as well as an awesome story to boot. For those of you who don't know, Superman has learned that his wife Lois is pregnant. After being drugged by the Joker, Superman thinks he is fighting Doomsday, but it's actually Lois. Unbeknownst to Superman, she has been fitted with a nuclear bomb, so upon her death, it goes off destroying all the metropolis along with millions of people. Superman goes mad with rage and murders the Joker by punching him through his chest. Eventually, Superman forms the One Earth Regime and rules the Earth with a ruthless fist alongside not only heroes but also villains killing anyone who opposes him. It also spawned a sequel as well as an excellent comic book series. This wouldn't be the first time that DC characters would be featured in a fighting game as back in 1995, Sunsoft released Justice League Task Force for the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis. This was a few years after the Street Fighter craze so everybody including their dirty uncles were putting out fighting games. Some good some bad, and some right in the middle. This game didn't have a huge roster, but it did feature your usual favorites such as Superman, Batman, and Green Arrow. Of course, myself being a DC nut, I enjoyed the game for what it was, which was a typical Street Fighter knockoff. It wasn't bad, it wasn't good, it was just sort of average. In 2007, Midway Games announced they were planning Mortal Kombat 8, which would be a dark, gritty, serious, back-to-basics reboot of the series. For the longest time, Ed Boon had always wanted to mix Mortal Kombat with some other IP for a huge crossover. During the development of Mortal Kombat 8, the opportunity to work with DC Comics became a possibility, so they jumped at the chance. From the get-go, they realized they couldn't have a game where the DC characters used ultra-violent fatalities, so they were shooting for a teen rating, but even with that, certain fatalities had to be censored. I will show these in just a bit. The roster was chosen primarily for their popularity, but also for parallels between both universes. 
Batman vs. Sub-Zero, etc. Mr. Boone had wanted to do something that had not been done before with the emphasis on a long, compelling storyline along with a solid fighting game. The story mode runs close to three and a half hours and features fully motion captured animation and voice acting. This was one of the first fighting games to ever attempt this. When he pitched this idea to Midway Games producers, they were unwilling to go this route feeling it was unnecessary and not possible. The project would require technology and knowledge that up until this point was not available. One big stumbling block was the ability to stream video while at the same time loading data required for the next fight. However, the team was sold after they completed a single scene transition into gameplay and out of gameplay. The team was also not sold on the idea of fighting game fans wanting a film inspired story mode. Mr. Boone had viewed the single player mode as a major source of appeal to casual fans who otherwise would not pay attention to fighting games. It was during this time Midway's finances became a major issue with them scaling back and downright canceling certain titles. Instead of fully animated cutscenes, they tried to compromise with Mr. Boone by using still images accompanied by music and dialogue like you would see in some sort of fancy comic presentation. This frustrated him so he used his authority to force the team to develop his pitch as he envisioned. Because the game was going to be highly story driven, DC Comics offered up writers Jimmy Palmiotti and Justin Gray to ensure that the characterization of the DC characters were consistent. There was also the issue of balance with certain characters being much more powerful than others. When having a fighting game involving Superman who could essentially wipe off the entire universe they had to come up with an idea to make the character more balanced and they did that by using magic to limit his abilities. This also affected other non-powered characters such as the Joker who could go toe to toe with the likes of Scorpion. As far as the character designs go, the DC characters look fantastic with slightly updated versions of their classic suits with a little bit of twisted steel and sex appeal. The technology allowed the developers to capture all the detail that they could imagine in the character models and make them look exactly as they were envisioned. This was the first time that DC characters have been represented with as much detail and in 3D. For example, the Flash's costume is not just a red jumpsuit. If you zoom in close, you'll see fine textures all throughout. The Mortal Kombat characters have also been updated with extra armor and gadgets. One of my favorites of the series in terms of not only the mythology but also the design is Baraka. His dual blades look like something a serial killer would wield and his teeth remind me of my wife's toenails. The art style of the game differs quite a bit in this version because it's the first next generation Mortal Kombat game. The pre-production art was very important in the creation of this game because it helped identify the look and also a sense of placement specifically with the environments. It was tricky creating the backgrounds because they were very intricately detailed. It took a number of artists months to complete all of the arenas but felt that the detail was necessary for rabid Mortal Kombat and DC fan bases. Even after playing the game numerous times, players could still notice little details that they didn't pick up on the first few times around. The game would use the Unreal Engine 3 which also powered Gears of War among others. The dev team used Autodesk software as well as Illuminate Labs for lighting. The work done in this game would be seen in future Mortal Kombat games such as Mortal Kombat 9 and Injustice. After the initial release of this game, the Collector's Edition would be released which featured a number of extras including a 16 page comic book prequel entitled Beginnings which was illustrated by Mortal Kombat co-creator John Tobias. 
It also included the original Mortal Kombat movie on Blu-ray and a special cover by the modern day Norman Rockwell, Alex Ross, who was also my absolute favorite comic book artist. This would be the last game in the franchise developed by Midway Games before the company went bankrupt in 2009 and the franchise was sold to Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment. Due to these financial issues, the planned DLC was cancelled. The first two characters were going to be Quan Chi from the Mortal Kombat side and Harley Quinn from the DC side. There were also very early plans to include Kung Lao and Doomsday. This fall, two worlds collide and combat begins again. Fight! Mortal Kombat vs. DC Universe. Which side will you choose? Mortal Kombat vs. DC Universe was released for the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 in 2008. As the story goes, Shao Kahn has tried once again to invade Earthrealm, but has been stopped by the forces of light provided by Raiden. His powerful blast sends Shao Kahn through the portal. Occurring at the same time on Earth, Superman has stopped Darkseid's invasion by blasting him with his heat vision as he enters a boom tube. Instead of stopping each person, they merge into the villainous Dark Khan, which causes the DC and Mortal Kombat universes to merge. This spreads a mysterious force known as Combat Rage that infects the champions of both worlds. It's up to you to stop these nefarious evil creatures and protect your world once and for all. The game is a one or two player fighting game which offers an incredible single player story mode. Now let me get this out of the way and tell everyone up front that yes, the game has been toned down just a bit and now offers a teen rating instead of mature. This means that all the spine ripping, heart pulling, arm ripping fatalities had to be replaced. The Mortal Kombat characters still have fatalities, but since the DC characters are heroes and do not kill, they have something called heroic brutalities. These finishers sees the heroes get a few nasty shots in but are not lethal in any way. Although Superman's does look a bit brutal with him smashing his opponent's head as if he was using the strength tester at a carnival. The controls are fairly standard if you have played Mortal Kombat games in the past. You have four attack buttons on the face of the controller. The top two face buttons are generally two punches and the two bottom buttons are for kicks. You also have a block button, a grab button, and a button to initiate close combat. There is still blood in the game and one cool feature is that the characters show visible damage as the match progresses. Usually you'll see bruises, blood marks, and torn pieces of clothing. It's really cool to see the damage on Scorpion in particular because his mask breaks off showing a part of his skull like head. The story mode is told through 15 chapters, 7 for the Mortal Kombat characters and 8 for the DC characters. Each of the chapters allows you to play as a different character. The roster includes some pretty heavy hitters from both sides including Liu Kang, Sonya Blade, Jax, Katana, Baraka, Kano, Shao Kahn, Sub-Zero, Scorpion, Shang Tsung, and Raiden from the Mortal Kombat side. The DC Universe offers up The Flash, Batman, Catwoman, Deathstroke, Darkseid, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, Captain Marvel before legally having to change his name to Shazam, the Joker, 
Lex Luthor, and Superman. There is also one new character you can play as, the villainous Dark Khan. The storyline is very compelling and I can't do it justice here, but suffice to say, if you are a fan of the mythology of either Mortal Kombat or DC, you need to check this out. Upon starting up the game, you can select either Arcade Mode, which is your typical one-on-one -on -one fighting game with characters from both sides, but the real meat and potatoes of the game is the Story Mode. In this, you get to choose your side, allowing you to play as characters from either the Mortal Kombat or DC Universe and having the story told from two different perspectives. Depending on which side you choose, you will see the opposite universe as the invaders of your own. It's a pretty cool concept with the game showcasing almost two hours of fully animated cutscenes. It also greatly increases the replay value. As I mentioned, the merging of the universe and the combat rage that flows through the various characters allow non-powered individuals to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the much more powerful beings. This magic also affects Superman and limits his abilities just like in the comics. The gameplay has been overhauled since Mortal Kombat Armageddon and it plays quite a bit better. It still takes place on a 3D plane, meaning you can still sidestep around the arena as much as you like. Chain combos have been shortened down to two or three hits, which are a lot easier to pull off. It also takes less time to recover from moves, which allows you more freedom with your combos. Mixing of special moves in your combos makes it feel much more like Mortal Kombat 2, which is definitely a good thing. There is also a new rage meter which increases by hitting a blocking opponent and taking damage. If you are in a pinch, you can use half the meter which lets you perform a combo breaker. If the meter is filled, you can hit both triggers which activates rage mode. This gives the player a temporary boost in damage and defense. This also makes certain combos unblockable. This is similar, but not exactly like, the roid rage Scott Steiner would go through when attempting to do math. Interspersed throughout the fights are new additions to the gameplay mechanics. These include free fall combat, which is activated automatically after you throw an opponent to a lower level in the arena. Once you do this, you jump on your opponent like stink on a skunk, all the while hitting different buttons to pummel your opponent in midair. However, they can counter this by hitting the same button and putting you in a defensive position. Every successful hit fills up a meter and the higher the meter goes, the more damage your opponent will take once they hit the ground. If you fill the meter halfway, you will perform a super attack, which is a character-specific move that will add a little extra damage and give them the win. These are really cool to see, especially with Batman as he throws an exploding Batarang. Another new minigame addition is Close Combat. If you hit a specific button, your fighter will try to grab your opponent and bring him in closer. If you are successful in this, the camera zooms in for a close-up view of the two fighters. You can hit different buttons to perform different close-range strikes on your opponent. If they hit the same button as you though, they will counter-attack, ending the close combat until somebody else starts another one. People have been critical of this minigame, calling it pointless, but I think it's really cool and it shows off the detail of each character model. The other new addition to the gameplay is the triumphant return of Test Your Might. This is done by knocking your opponent through certain boundaries. To enable this, your character grabs the other fighter and you start running straight forward, smashing through any and all walls that are in your way, similar to when Hulk smash. You have to mash the buttons to add extra damage while at the same time, your opponent has to mash his buttons as well to try to keep some of the damage off him. It's really cool and opens up the boundaries of each level showing you how big and expansive this game really is. 
Speaking of the levels, the backgrounds, as you would expect from a Mortal Kombat game, are intricately detailed. This is due to the fantastic pre-production art and really being a fan of the DC comic source material in particular. It's just oh so cool being able to fight from Metropolis, Gotham City, Superman's Fortress of Solitude, the Batcave which has three levels, each one having neat little easter eggs littered throughout such as various costumes on display, a Batboat, a Batwing, Batmobile, and more. The Mortal Kombat side gets that same level of love with some pretty spectacular arenas such as the Nether Realm, Raiden's Temple, and the graveyard in which Johnny Cage's tombstone is visible. Round one, fight! <laughs> Now we come to what most Mortal Kombat fans are curious about, which are the fatalities. Yes, these have been toned down so there won't be any decapitations in your future. However, some of these are pretty violent and yet some are not, such as Kano's foot stomp of doom and Liu Kang dropping a Mortal Kombat machine on your opponent, minus Johnny Cage actor Daniel Pazina's likeness on the side of the machine. Each Mortal Kombat character has two fatalities while the DC heroes have two heroic brutalities. Shao Kahn, Darkseid, and Dark Khan do not have any finishing moves. By the way, these are only available in Arcade Mode and Versus Mode. Despite the expansive backgrounds and arena size, stage fatalities are completely missing. Speaking of the fatalities, here are a few of my favorites. Raiden wins. Captain Marvel wins. Lex Luthor wins. Deathstroke wins. Kitana wins. When it comes to the fatalities, there is a bit of censorship between the NTSC and PAL versions. When it comes to Deathstroke and the Joker, they both have fatalities where they shoot their opponents presumably in the head to finish them off. In the NTSC version, the shot that finishes them off takes place off camera. In the PAL version, the camera stays on your opponent and you see them get shot front and center. There are a few easter eggs littered throughout such as the Guardians of the Universe popping up and as I mentioned, the tombstone for Johnny Cage. When selecting arcade mode, you can choose to fight strictly the DC characters, Mortal Kombat characters, or a mixture of both. Once you make it through all the other fighters, you are confronted with Dark Khan. After defeating him, an ending is shown dependent on which side you are fighting for. Superman wins.
Raiden! He's gone. The others have disappeared as well. The rage? It's gone! What is this place? Darkseid's throne room. The two universes must have separated. Everything's returned to... normal. You aren't Darkseid. I am Shao Kahn! And you will bow to me! What? Superman! He's gone. Shao Kahn's throne room. The realms have been restored. If you are anything like Shao Kahn, you will find no refuge here. Your fate will be decided by the Elder Gods. There are also individual endings for each character to play as in arcade mode. Some of these are pretty cool to see, such as Sub-Zero essentially becoming Batman, Superman using the aid of the ancient wizard Shazam to create a new costume giving him resistance to magic, the Joker becoming Mayor, Sonya becoming a Green Lantern, etc. It goes without saying that the graphics are spectacular with nice, detailed character models and silky smooth animation. The model of Superman in particular reminds me of the Christopher Reeve version and the Captain Marvel model looks very similar to his early incarnation and also the way artist Alex Ross depicts him. The story mode is excellent with some decent voice acting, although nobody from the DC Animated Universe is present. The controls of the character are nice and tight, and the game is a lot of fun to play, especially in versus mode. When the game was released, it did offer online play, and both my son and I enjoyed this mode thoroughly. The audio was also fantastic with appropriately intense music and loud bone snapping sound effects. The same sound bites you would expect from characters such as Scorpion telling you to get over here are present. Get over here! As well as Raiden speaking in tongues when he does his Superman move and they all sound great. It's kind of funny hearing the same great Mortal Kombat announcer announce characters such as Batman or The Flash. The Flash wins. Ed Boon would finally get his wish with all of the guest crossovers that have occurred in the Mortal Kombat franchise. 
Some of these don't make a lick of sense, but then again, we are dealing with the mythology of characters that can throw ice balls and bolts of lightning. Some of the crazy guest crossovers include Freddy Krueger, Jason Voorhees, The Terminator, Rambo, The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Robocop, The Joker, Spawn, Leatherface, and more. I don't get why this game gets all the hate online. I guess it could be from the lack of blood and gore, but I always enjoyed this game, especially playing it with my son. This game would end up laying the foundation for future Mortal Kombat games, so it definitely has its place in history. It's a lot of fun to play, especially if you are a DC fan. If you've never had the chance to pretend to be Superman all the while fighting vicious characters from Outworld, be sure and give this game a shot. You'll be glad you did. If you want to learn more facts and features on the history of the making of the game, check out the bonus disc that came with the collector's edition. If you like this video, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also, if you would like to support me on Patreon, please click the link below. If you would like to contribute but not sign up for my Patreon, you can always click the donate button up above. Thanks everyone for watching.